Sydney to uh, then start with another the next talk, which uh, will be done by Anael uh, and uh, Claire uh, Lager um, for working with a project which is actually related to several interesting interrelated uh, projects. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Actually, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Wait. I will make you unmute. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, I have a pretty bad connection, so I think it's better if it's Anae who mm -hmm. shares the screen, because no. I'm afraid that the words uh, it will take some some delays. Uh, when I change the slide for you to see it. Yeah, okay. So you can, you can start to share the screen, but I wanted just before and I uh, shares it, uh, the story was that actually Claire uh, told me about this project about mapping uh, and gamifying mapping. And I was really uh, surprised because actually this is something which uh, allows people to benefit right from kind of common uh, common um, love to games right and benefits uh, from this in different projects which are also very serious for example such as mapping or studying the city so it was very alternative and very nice idea i was very really happy that you agreed to present um, and yeah i hope you managed to, yeah, okay, perfect. To push here. Yeah, thank you very much, Lubov. Actually, we had uh, uh, some discussions um, since uh, last uh, February with Lubov and another colleague um, from the uh, Netherlands named Paul Buman about those um, ideas of gamification. So, um, the project we are about to, to present you is a main Covadeo project. So for collect visualization and anal analysis of geohistorical board data. Um, I started it with the uh, region Bourgogne-Franche-Comté and uh, Anaï Elgouche joined it uh, as a PhD student. So she, she is doing mainly a, a PhD uh, about those uh, this problematic we want we want to share you uh, with this presentation. So I uh, yeah I don't present myself again. I think uh, you already done that. Mm. So um, uh, uh, Anaï, you're not in full screen. Maybe you can put the, the slide in full screen. Yeah, I just right. needed uh, to unmute uh, to unmute my mic. Yeah, can you now see it on full screen? I know it's works. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Perfect. Thanks. So the presentation we will do is um, going to follow this uh, plan. So we first uh, will talk about the research context and then about uh, the method and the data we used. The, then the, some analysis on uh, road networks. So we, we will talk uh, also about accessibility and uh, then uh, our perspectives. Uh, so uh, first of all, I will present uh, the research context of the project. Uh, the project uh, integrates uh, a scientific context that's considered cities as uh, complex systems. So first of all, uh, interaction inside networks can explain a lot about cities' function. And uh, then uh, we, uh, we have the need to, to study simultaneously the city function and the, its physical environment. Uh, more recently in complex systems, so cities are mainly uh, considered as uh, organized complexity. So for their better understanding, uh, we are apprehending them as systems of networks and flows. Uh, we are interested principally uh, for uh, road networks. So among the three morphological entities that forms the city, we have road networks, parcels and buildings. Road light is the most durable over time. So uh, when uh, there is a catastrophe or uh, um, another uh, context, uh, also the road networks is, uh, is provided and, uh, and there goes minor modification. Uh, based on graph theory, uh, we, are, we are having a, a morphological approach of those road networks, which consists of presenting an urban plan 
with a mathematical graph in which streets are represented uh, by segments and their intersection by nodes. Uh, territorial and urban planning uh, represent, uh, represent uh, this road networks with spatial simulation. So uh, these disciplines uh, aim to better understand the development of such networks some analyses are based uh, on urban on those models to describe urban growth and also transportation uh, networks. In terms of urban analysis linked to road networks, there is a significant uh, research uh, which has been conducted, but they are mainly based on topological patterns of those uh, networks. And we have also uh, Aim, we are also aiming to identify universality in those road networks to understand their structure, including scale invariance, and to analyze and model their evolution logics and growth. Specifically on those analyses, uh, we are aiming to uh, have a, a road network analysis based on historical data. So the link between road networks topology to historical evolution uh, has uh, only uh, been conducted by a few uh, researchers. And uh, so we, we know that the road networks morphology is a translation of urban history and uh, spatial analysis methods and graph theory had all proven uh, to be effective in studying those networks uh, based on urban, uh, on urban evolution and on historical data. So here uh, we have an, uh, an example of uh, some techniques that has been developed uh, in terms of uh, creation of spatial temporal databases, but uh, also uh, the classification and of the evolution of urban uh, fabrics. Uh, for example, we have uh, the techniques of diach diachronic uh, data matching, which are aiming to uh, reconstruct uh, the morphological evolution of road networks. Uh, we can see here uh, three uh, snapshots of three different time frames of uh, uh, parts of road networks. And we uh, have here uh, the stacks, who is a, a spatiotemporal agreed graph, which, uh, whose entities are labeled by their time signature. Yeah. I'm muted. I was muted, <laughs> so I started alone. Yeah. So th that's with uh, those ideas that we developed the Covadeo project, and uh, we wanted to analyze the road network on, on the whole region. So we asked for financement to the, the region Burgundy Franche Comté, and we 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 started this project and to vector to digitalize uh, the the road networks from. Uh, many uh, old maps on all the, the region territory, we needed a lot of time, a lot of human resources because we can't do, do it um, automatically. So we decided to develop a serious game. So to ask to, from crowdsourcing to, um, to digitalize ancient map. The, the objectives when we will have this data is uh, to understand the progressive structuring of uh, territorial patterns and to analyze the historical evolution of road networks. This is the, the idea of the PhD of Anai. I'll let you change it. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, those are examples of uh, ancient map we, we found. So we, we had um, uh, maps uh, about all the territory from many different years, going from the 17th century, as you can see. So this is uh, Besançon on the first line and Pontarly on the second one. So uh, from all those map, uh, those maps we, we gathered, we kept uh, data. So metadata, we 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 built a catalog of uh, all the information about those maps so we can know for each one uh, whether we can see um, or not the, the, the legend, the, the road network. The, the, the idea is we had to see the road network on the map, otherwise they didn't interest us. 
but uh, we wanted to keep many other information about when, where, how, all the, the information about the cartography. And then we, we develop all the, the catalog with a structure from the national level to the communal one uh, on all the, the territory of the region. So uh, we applied this on the region because we had fundings from the region, but the idea is to, to do something uh, generic so we can develop it all, uh, all over the world uh, if, you want, if we want. So this is the structure of our database. You see the map on the central uh, uh, plan and then uh, linked to the map, we have the data coverage because we want to know where the map is located, when, uh, to which period it is linked. And uh, on each zone or study area, we want to know for each segment of the current road network, if it was or not existing at this specific time. So for now, we, we had gathered uh, 4,040 4, maps. Some of them are georeferenced. We, I, I hired uh, four, um, four persons to georeference all of them. They are working right now. So uh, very soon there will be whole georeference. And then uh, we tried uh, the vectorization and the first analysis on two uh, maps for now, for now. So one of Dijon and one in Besançon. And from uh, to to have all our georeferenced map digitalized, so we will uh, use a serious game. So we are trying to imagine all the mechanism we will put in this game to be able to uh, have the data by crowdsourcing. So as you see uh, on the post spot. On the bottom uh, right, you have the old map, the ancient map with the actual uh, road network on it. So this will be the starting point of the game. And then from this starting point, we will ask to the, the players to say for each segment, if it was present, absent, or need to be modified on the, uh, from what the player can see on the ancient map. So this is the, we, we developed a first test version uh, with the code from a uh, uh, building inspector. So it's uh, something uh, made with, uh, with the New York Public uh, Library. So this is first result on, uh, on uh, sorry, Anna, <laughs> it's, it's moving. We are not very synchronized, sorry. Uh, so you saw just before uh, the first results uh, with uh, some uh, test on the game on uh, the, uh, the map of uh, Pontarlier. So here it's not really from the game, it's Anna who, who did the digitalization, but it's just to, to see what segments were present, absent or to be modified on, on this map, to have an example of the results we want to have with the game. And then you have, uh, you have a, a view of building inspector. So the, the online web platform already existing developed by the New York Public Library, uh, where you can um, say if a building is or not uh, on the map. And here we adapt it to our problematic, the road network. So this is our test game for Covadeo. So you see one segment and then the ancient map uh, just be, uh, behind and yet you have to analyze it with it. So this is online. If you want to play, we can <laughs> send you the link to test it. But after that, we will develop our own. So to analyze it, the idea is to make a graph from the world network. So to, to do it, we can use either a direct approach or a dual approach. If, you, if we go from a direct approach, as I did during my PhD a few years ago, so uh, we put some uh, nodes at the intersection and uh, um, a segment between two intersections in is an edge. And from that, you have a graph. And from this direct approach, you, also ca you can also do a dual uh, graph. So in the dual graph, the difference is each, um, each axe of the road network become a node and uh, an edge between two nodes will be in connection and uh, crossing between two axes in the direct approach. So either with the one or, not, or the other, you can do some interesting analysis on the road network. And uh, the method I developed during my PhD is to do an hypergraph on the graph 
uh, with a um, um, a link uh, making associating two edges at each intersection. So actually at each intersection of the road network, we will check for the deviation angle between two edges. And we will say if the, the deviation is minimal, then we will uh, combine the two edge. Either if uh, the, the deviation is um, above 60 degrees, then we won't combine them because the deviation is too large. So to, to, to go to those 60 degree, I did a lot of comparison and comparative studies uh, between many things. I won't detail it here, but it uh, appeared to be interesting to have this kind of, um, of threshold. And then from the network of edges, you can have a network of ways allowing to do an, an analysis which is completely uh, independent of border effect. And this is what we wanted because if you analyze your road network and what you read on it depend on how you cut it, because in space it's continuous, then it's not very relevant. So I will let Anae present you some of the analysis. Uh, so based on uh, the vectorization of uh, historical road networks and uh, the approach that Claire just uh, explained, uh, we, uh, we had uh, uh, at this stage of this work uh, studied the topology of those historical road networks. So here we began by comparing three road networks uh, by the degree of weight. So we have, uh, uh, we are using just some uh, road networks indicator that we will present right now. And uh, with these indicators, uh, the degree centrality, which correspond to the number of ways that a reference way intersects, uh, we can uh, identify the most connected structure emerging which ha can also be identified as the major traffic roads in uh, the three different cities that were present here at different uh, historical periods. So you can see the high values, which uh, can uh, represent avenues, uh, departmental roads or national roads in, uh, in those, um, on those territories. So the high levels of the degree indicator correspond uh, generally to fast access roads. And then the lower levels represents roads with fine access to local areas in the city. And uh, uh, then we calculate uh, another two indicators uh, which are uh, linked. So we have the connectivity, which allow us to calculate the access degree indicators. Uh, these indicators define the number of, uh, of ways uh, that a certain way does not intersect at uh, their ex, uh, extremities. So we have here, uh, uh, there is one more. So we have here this indicator uh, calculated uh, on the road networks of Dijon. This is a city in the Burgundy Franche Comte uh, region. So we have here uh, three historical uh, periods. And so these indicators, uh, we have the most important values corresponding to the main traffic roads in the urban structure. Uh, we have uh, mainly also the historical uh, ones, which uh, which uh, can we can uh, like uh, see in the different uh, in the different periods. And uh, the most important roads on term of access are those connecting the historical uh, center of the city uh, to different new urban areas uh, in the recent uh, historical periods. Anne, sorry, you have five minutes. Yeah, sorry. So uh, here we have a comparison between uh, the degree and the axis degree. And what uh, we can see about this is that the most important uh, road in terms of access are those connecting the historical center to new urban areas. And then uh, some ways with a high de degree level can have a lowest access degree, which can be explained by the fact that uh, they are very connected to uh, the, the city center, but they are not essential for serving the entire territory. Then we have the between centrality, uh, which represents how often a certain way occurs on all the shortest topological paths between each pair of ways. We have here an example of this indicator calculated on the city of Besançon in three historical periods. So the highest level of the betweenness correspond to the most frequently used roads, allowing efficient traffic flow within the networks. And uh, inversely, the limited user works uh, uh, 
are uh, having uh, uh, lowest uh, levels of bituminous centrality. And finally, we have the closeness centrality, which represents the waste topological proximity to the entire network. So the higher is the closeness, the more the way will allow access to the whole network in a minimum of turns. Uh, by calculating these indicators on uh, the city of uh, Pontarlier, we have the high levels of proximity uh, corresponding to ways uh, connecting the entire networks and allowing uh, easy access. Also, reading these indicators give us information about the history of the territory because we have high values corresponding uh, to uh, roads in the historical center. And uh, those connecting uh, the, the city center to the regional territory. So to conclude this presentation, uh, we can uh, we can say that uh, these data collections want to be first on the, all the region of uh, Bourgogne Franche Comté. Then we can use it this methodology uh, on um, every city in the world as long as we have current uh, road networks data. But uh, actually, with OpenStreetMap, it's available. And then uh, we want to observe the variation of indicators through time. So. Is there some um, similar similarities um, from one city to the other, or is there some uh, variation depending to the, the form of uh, the city or some kind of patterns? And we want re to relate the, the topology to the um, uh, to the networks to the dynamics it follows through time. Thank you very much for our attention, and this is a work to be continued. This is our poster, so I present some part of it, but maybe you if you could maybe if you could send uh, to the chat to everyone the link to the game, that would be yeah, great because yeah. this game uh, is actually already released, and when I saw it, uh, I was really uh, into it, like you know, like it's kind of citizen science approach to the city, right, uh, but more to the city in the past, so I don't know. Uh, like, yes. Yeah. Uh, as Claire said, it's just a test version we have released right now. So uh, the final version uh, is will be developed for uh, the summer of twenty twenty one. This is not our platform. Actually, it's just a code from Building Inspector. We adapt to test uh, the method on the road network, but we will develop our own platform. We are uh, currently. Um, um, writing the, um, all the spe specification to do it. Thanks, Anna. I, I was looking for yeah. it. Okay, great. So you are doing to, to, to test it if you want. Are there any questions or comments or suggestions? Because maybe somebody knows also other games like this in the cities because I actually didn't know. So uh, if you know, you feel free to share with us. But basically City Hall, can, uh, it supported you, right? Um, basically supported the idea of this game for the city. That's how you also get support, right? To run this project or is there some story behind to what to the, the idea of this project yeah i uh, actually during my phd i, I worked on uh, to develop the um, the the method to analyze a road network to 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 make uh, to, to make emerge some uh, complex information from something really simple as the structure of the road network and i i studied the actual uh, road network like uh, from many cities and even from other kind of social network as uh, uh, veins in a leaf or um, cracks in clay or uh, 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 many special network just to study the, the, the things that are um, trans <laughs> uh, transported from one to, to, to the other and uh, who remains which remains true whatever the network you are studying as long it is as it is a, a spatial network so a, a network embedded it's in space actually 
And then uh, the idea of morphogenesis was already present, but I didn't have time with my three years to do everything. <laughs> and then uh, it's, it, it was a seed in my brain. I wanted to develop it. And then I had this occasion. And I, I really like games also. And so I use game crowdsourcing. I find it, I find it really, really nice because you, you can bring uh, some people who doesn't know anything about research to do research or to to help us uh, to help you in your research projects so uh, merging morphogenesis in cities and um, and serious game it was uh, to me uh, something i really wanted to try mm -hmm. actually I'm, I'm trying the game now which is very nice <laughs> so I, did you I, choose uh, besançon or dijon i am on besançon Okay. Uh, and nicely, I mean, the, the thing that most of your things are correct, you know, I, I did recently a project where we did um, a citizen science approach for annotating tweets because it's very, very noisy and we wanted to annotate uh, symptoms of COVID on Twitter. Uh, and, and something we did is that we proposed also for people to skip because sometimes it's very hard yeah. to know if you're sure or not. And also we kept a user ID of the session so that we can also distinguish if several people annotated the same tweet and have a degree of precision to based on that, you know, decide our threshold. Did you, did, did you think of, do you have something like that in your, in your uh, game? Yeah, yeah, I, I tell you, we are working uh, right now the specification and we really, uh, uh, this uh, test game, uh, yeah, many users told us the same thing as you, like we need to, to, to be able to skip when we don't know. Either way, we, we won't like to play because we, we will feel like we are bringing bad information. So if we don't know, like we will add the skip uh, way and we will uh, also, um, we are planning to, pro to propose to the users to create an account so mm. we can keep the link and we wanted to to make some uh, system of points and teams uh, according to the territory the city and the, the the time chosen so and the idea is to to, to go from uh, through levels then uh, when you manage to complete one territory and you you become an expert and you have more rights or uh, yeah we are thinking about all of that right now actually some things that worked in the context of galaxy zoo where the idea was to annotate galaxies by whether they are spiral or uh, well there's two types right spiral and just like the gazes uh, like the, the one that is more spherical uh, people were annotating images and they actually allowed people to discuss on a forum <clears throat> and and at some point someone found something that was not belonging to any of the two categories and they began discussing about it and then some researcher came and we're like well that's interesting and they actually discovered another type this way and so the, I, I don't know if there's a, a total possibility but i know now that galaxy zoo allow any citizen science project to plug so that you don't have to handle the whole accounting etc and you can benefit from the community existing there to come and annotate also your own things that might be something to look at it's called a, a galaxy zoo yeah, uh, nice. I liked it. Yeah, great. Okay. Thanks. Sarah, you also had some comment or? Yes, I was just so inspired and wanted to say thank you very much um, for this uh, great talk because, um, yeah, the idea of um, games and research to bring that together um, in the city, I think this is so helpful. Um, at City Lab Berlin, we have um, some people that want to develop um, their own game um, that um, is an interface between um, yeah, the world of cargo bikes and this uh, bikes that carry heavy things around that are for free in Berlin. You can rent them for free. Um, and um, an online game where you can collect kilometers in the real world and then you can do something um, online because you are, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, you use uh, cargo bikes a lot. And I definitely want to show them your work because it's, um, I think it will help them a lot to make the next step. Um, and because they they have no idea how to develop a game or not even how to <laughs> um, do this tracking on bikes, um, but they are very motivated. <laughs> and yeah, it's very cool to see that it's um, actually um, working, your, your game, it's very cool. I like it a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you want to give my my contact, then we can discuss. If they need help, I will I will be happy to help if they if they want. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. This I think would make them more than happy. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> Great. I can I can write to my email address if 